Good new time zone and reality, everyone. My name is Bella here at Science Away, and today, happy holidays. <laughs> so the time I'm recording this, it is Christmas. So Merry Christmas. If you don't celebrate it, then happy holidays. If you celebrate nothing, then I hope you just had a good day and weekend overall. So I have some new products to assemble and play with. So we're gonna be there's gonna be a series of videos where I'm assembling them and playing with them. Not any live streams, I don't think. I might change my mind later, we'll see. You know, make sure you follow me on YouTube and Twitter to see when it happens, and uh, Mixer as well. But the kit we're assembling today, I have to, are you ready for this? Just gotta get it. It is the 4D Vision Frog Anatomy Model by 4D Master. So I should probably have done this as a warning before him, but if you don't like the innards of stuff or you're squeamish then you may not want to watch this video because <laughs> we're gonna look at the inside of a frog so 40 master makes a bunch of products looking at the inside of various animals uh, they have some of cars and machines even the human anatomy so i got the frog one so yeah we're gonna look at the inside of a frog i won't be posting any pictures in this video of actual we're like guts because as you can imagine this is somewhat cartoonish. It's, you know, it's not actual guts or anything of a frog. Let me turn it around. But hey, we have some actual, okay, I was gonna say actual innards, not the actual innards, but the toy plastic models of actual parts inside of a frog. So we're going to be assembling this. There's 31 parts with a stand and an illustrated guidebook. This is for uh, ages eight and up. So, you know, it's got some small pieces, so of course, you know, there's a choking hazard, you know, kids three and, uh, children that are under three years old should not be playing with this. But we're going to assemble it. Now, on the back here, I don't know if you saw it here, on the back, it has a description about frogs. We're going to go ahead and read that. I know you can barely see me. But, uh, frogs are amphibians in the, oh gosh, how to pronounce this, the Enera order, that's probably their species, which are cold-blooded, semi-aquatic vertebrae animals. The order Anora contains over 5,000 species and 33 families, and about 88% of, of amphibian species are frogs. That's a lot. That's pretty cool, too. So before I continue on reading, what is your favorite frog species, or even frog family, and what's your favorite frog frog facts. Let me know in the comments below. You can tweet at me. I would love to hear them. I only recently started getting into frogs. So I was like, oh, you know, this would be really cool. So let's see here. Where was I? Uh, frogs have several different stages in their life cycle. Egg, fish like tadpole. Yep. Tadpole with legs, young frog, and lastly, adult frog. Adult frogs have long and powerful hind legs, a short body, webbed digits or fingers, uh, Protruding eyes, so that means they come out. You could also say uh, extruding. Uh, and our tail is, yep, that's true. I've never seen a frog with a tail except for the pad, uh, tadpole state. In the tadpole state of frogs, they live in water and have gills for breathing. Frogs breathe through their skin as well as their lungs as adult frogs. Almost all species of adult frogs are carnivorous. They primarily eat insects and small animals like earthworms, minnows, and spiders. <laughs> Most frogs have a sticky tongues for catching insects. The frog darts, oh, the frog darts out its tongue quickly, catches the insect and retracts it back inside its mouth within a second. Most of these species likes to hunt at night. I thought I was gonna say the uh, dart frogs, which are a poisonous frog species. They're mostly called the poison, the poison dart frogs, but uh, all right, so I can see some pieces here. We have the mouth. Oh gosh. See, this video is gonna be mostly about me pronouncing some of the uh, anatomy wrong. So please correct me in the comments and I'm very sorry. I'll also be sure to put the correct pronunciation on screen. So we have the, where we start? Well, we have the trunk, we have the rear leg, the muscle, tibiofibula. <laughs> Well, instead of me butchering any everything, I'll, I'm just gonna show you the back of the box here. You can read it for yourself. I'm trying to see if it's in frame. Read it for yourself uh, and try to guess how it's said. Cause I'm not spending five minutes butchering everything. 
So I hope everything was in frame. Uh, looks like it wasn't. Here we go. So hopefully you can see everything and read it. I'll try to be sure to put the words on screen so I'm not butchering everything. But we're gonna go, go ahead and take it out of the box. All right, so camera angle has changed. You can see the desk, you can see the box. And we're gonna go, go ahead and take this out. So I'm guessing this is our stand. Yep. Now I'm surprised there's no hole, so I'm guessing the frog just kind of sits there. There's not actually anything to weigh it down. And we have our guide book. Oh cool, so if we look here in this book, let me get in view here. So we have the frog anatomy from both sides, but then also we have the skeleton of a frog and the life cycle of a frog. So they've named all the different bones on the side here, and I know you can't really see it. Let me try to get a better view for you all. So pause the video, watch some focus, read all the different bones, and it's highlighted. And then of course we have the life cycle of a frog, I don't focus. So we have egg mass, we have a tadpole, tadpole with legs, young frog, and adult frog. That's pretty nice how they've illustrated it. And then, oh, what's really cool. All right, so there's a lot of information here. Once again, be sure to pause and read this. This is all the kind of information about different parts of the frog, their eye, their tongue. And then on the other side, we have the same thing. All right, so then on the back, we have a Q&A. How long is the lifespan of a frog? It depends on the species. Actually, it's pretty hard to track a frog all its life too. We just know some of the bullfrogs can live over three, 30 years. Not 330 years, just 30 years. I was gonna say 300, but no. Can adult frogs breathe underwater? Yes, frogs are amphibians. They are able to breathe through their skin while underwater. How can frogs hear without uh, hear sound without ears? Actually, frogs have ears, but unlike humans, external ones, they have big round flat ears on each side of their head called hypanium, typanium. Please correct me in the comments. Which means drum. Do frogs have teeth? Yes, most of the species do have very small cone teeth around the upper edge of the jaw, which are called maxillary teeth. Some frogs also have vomerine teeth on the roof of their mouth. Frogs don't have teeth on their lower jaw. Lower jaw. Actually, toads do not have any teeth. How far is the world record for a single leap of a frog? The world record is held by a frog called Rosie the Riveter <laughs> from California. It jumped more than 6.5 M, which is 21 feet, in 1985. Which kind of a frog is the largest in the world? The Goliath frog, which is found in West Africa, is the largest species in the world. It can grow up to 33 centimeters or 13 inches long from head to vent and weighs up to 3 kg, which is 7 pounds. It is also an endangered species too. How to distinct toads from frogs? Toads have stubby bodies with short hind legs, which are for walking instead of hopping. Their skin is warty, dry, and has a poison glands behind their eyes. Frogs have two bulging eyes, long and strong webbed hind feet that are good for leaping and swimming. Frogs have smooth or slimy skin and frogs chest cartilage is different from toads too. So that is the q and I love the fact that there's so much educational information in here. One of the things when it comes to certain uh, you could say, not necessarily kits, but products that have, for example, dinosaurs or some other animals. One thing I'm always wishing for is fun facts and information about the animal. Yes, you can always look it up. Some kids, if you remember, aren't necessarily on the internet, depends on how old they are. For example, this is for ages eight and up. Now, yeah, you could go and say, you know, a lot of kids are on the internet, but some of them aren't. Some of them don't really know about Google. Some might have a parental lock. They might be able to search things or go to certain websites. So it's really nice to have a physical booklet as well to read the information about frogs. Because yes, you can always look up in things on the internet, but like I said, some kids who are maybe not allowed, they can look at their booklet. They have these Q&A in the back. They have the different information about different parts of the frog. And it's nice to have a physical thing 
in your hand sometimes. And some parents are not always a fan of kids on the computer a whole lot. So this is a nice way to somewhat disconnect and have things hand on. Not to mention some kids learn differently. Some, some learn by hearing, some learn by visual, uh, by looking at things. Those are the visual kids. And then some learn by touching and feeling. So having a physical thing you can hold and touch, and you can also visually look at the different uh, life cycles of a frog and different parts of a frog, and then the inside of a frog, that just really helps, you know? And it especially helps when you have a actual skeleton for the insides of a frog. So now on the back here, aside from the Q&A, if you open this up, we have the same thing that was on the back of the box. You know, frogs are amphibians in the Anora order. We have that. But then we have the frog anatomy, uh, anatomy assembly instructions over here. And that's pretty much it. So we have beginner. So down here we have beginner 35 minutes, average 28 minutes, and advanced 16 minutes. So the cool thing is they kind of make it somewhat, not necessarily competitive, but kind of a challenge. What is your record? So. Put a timer on, I'm not sure if I can set a timer. So I'll have Cortana here set a timer for me and we'll time my time and see how well it goes. And as you can see here, it's they're not numbered, but you can kind of get that, you know, this is step one, this is step two, step three, and you just kind of go this way and you can somewhat look and see what's happening. So I'm gonna look at the instructions. I'm gonna be off to the side over here. I'm gonna have Cortana set a timer. I'm not sure if I, take, if I should take the stuff out of the box first. So I think for now we're gonna take everything out of the box. Take that off. No, it's stuck. All right. We're gonna take everything out of the box just so we can get a look at all the pieces. I have no idea what this part is. We'll probably figure out later. I think it's part of this part here, which looks like if I go back to the instructions, this should be the esophagus so this i'm guessing this is like the underside of it. it looks like it'll snap together i won't do that just yet but we're gonna start taking things out of the box here this is what is this this is the is it actually so this is the heart of a frog very cool kind of has some of the similar shape here to ours i'm guessing this is like the lung part of it or that might just be the heart i'm not sure we'll see here Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So this middle part here, this darker purple, is the heart, while the bumpy surface here, the somewhat lighter purple, purple, <laughs> purple, purple, is the lungs. Very cool. Kind of like a bird if you think about it. Anyway, here we have, I believe these are the ovaries. So I'm not really going to explain what ovaries are in a frog because this is a Family friendly channel. Next we have, what is this? This is, let's find it. Okay, so this, I have it upside down. This is the liver right here. So one thing, while we're taking things out, let me, let's go back to the first thing I took out, which was the esophagus. And I'm going to, I know I said it earlier, I was not going to read the different informations, but I think I am. Just for some of our viewers who learn by listening, but also people who maybe can't watch the video but can listen to it. And I'm, I'm t I am taking these out of order, I'm sorry. I'm, so this is the esophagus, and it is a muscular tube that connects the mouth and stomach. The contracting and expanding of muscles in the walls pushes the food down to the stomach. Frogs lack a neck, so the esophagus is quite short. I didn't know frogs didn't have necks. I mean, I guess you can look and see that, but you know, it's pretty cool. So the next thing I took out was the heart. So that is this part. So the frog's heart is unlike humans. It has only it only has three chambers, not four. This triangular structure is located at the top of the liver. That's interesting. And then we go to the lungs part here. It is two sponge-like organs located underneath and behind the heart and liver. It is for gas exchanging. So some of these are long, some of these are short. The ovary is an organ which produces eggs in a female frog. During the breeding season, a single female frog may lay over 4,000 eggs at one time in the pond or swamp. Go to the liver. The largest brown, this is purple. <laughs> the largest brown organ of the body cavity, which is composed of three parts, uh, which is composed of three parts. That consists of right lobe, left 
anterior lobe, forgive me for saying that wrong, and left posterior lobe. Bile is a dig digestive juice made by the liver and stored in the gallbladder for the proper digestion of fats. Next, we're going to take out, I'm interested in this part, what is this? It looks like a brain. Oh, it's in there pretty good. Eh, okay. This is, you know, this may be the back side of, let's take out this other part here. Cause this may be the back side of it. I'm seeing it can connect to other parts. This is in pretty good, oh gosh. I haven't even gone to assemble it yet. I'm already strugg struggling. There we go. All right. Yeah, so it looks like these connect. I'm not gonna put them in now, but um, all right. So what we have grabbed here, this is the back side of it. So it's more like this. So this is, if I'm looking at it correctly, this is the kidney. So we have two parts here because we have the, I'm guessing everything highlighted in orange is what's showing here. So we have this purple stuff here, which is the kidneys apparently. This pink stuff is the intestine. So we're gonna read about the kidneys first. All right, well, as the organs of, oh gosh, excretory, <laughs> I said it wrong, I'm so sorry. Or your grandchild, oh gosh, please correct me in the comments. System, which filter the blood and remove the waste to make urine. All right, so this helps the frog remove the waste that make pee, basically. <laughs> And then we look at the intestine, which is the purple part. I'm gonna hold up the other part so you can see it better, this part. The principal organ of digestion and, and absorption of digested food. The first straight portion is the, oh gosh, how do you say this? Duginum? <laughs> I have no idea how to say this. The curled po portion is called the ileum. I'm gonna put all the words on screen I'm having trouble with, just so you can all take a crack at pronouncing it yourselves. I mean, I got it, it hurt, but I got it. <laughs> Does this stuff come apart? Ooh, okay. This stuff comes apart, it looks like. No, nope, there's no information for this part in particular. See, I'm moving certain parts. You know, part of me is like, you know, don't break it, the goodness, but no. So this does come off. That's pretty nice, actually. I mean, it might be a little gory for some people, but you know, that's pretty cool. We're gonna put it back. Poor frog, I'm sorry. This frog needs a name. All right, we're gonna put that aside. Let's grab one of the uh, hands or tentacle fingers. Ah, oh, gosh, this one's stuck. Oh, no, it's not, yay. <laughs> All right, so here we have two frog hands. So there's any information on the hands. No, there's not. All right, so put those aside. Just get a close up so you all can see it. Okay, we're going to move on to, the, oh, this part came out really easy. This is part of the leg. I like how you can see the muscle inside and the bone. That's pretty nice. And then we're going to grab, what is this part? Uh, some of the pieces were really loose. I'm not even sure if you saw when I was moving the box at the beginning of this video. This small part of the of the esophagus was moving around, and there's other parts in here that are stuck really well. <laughs> already struggling. This video is already semi long. <laughs> and we haven't even assembled it yet. There we go. Got it. This looks like part of an arm in a way. <laughs> Comes like flexing. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to grab the skeleton. Where's Doctor Skeleton? I had him in here somewhere. See, I'm really okay. Sometimes you just you have to like separate the plastic a little bit, and you can get things out easier. Look at this nice skeleton. Hello. <laughs> Very nice. All right, so we do have information about the skeleton, I believe. Yes, we do. The number of, of vertebrae in frogs are small, and they have no rib, and they have no ribs too. Huh. Actually, does the design of the frog skeleton is fit for jumping and swimming. So they have no ribs. That's interesting. I kind of thought all animals with the skeleton had ribs, but I guess not. It's very interesting. All right, that's gonna go there. And then is this two parts? Yes, it is. Ah, okay, that came out easy. I'm also loving how you can just see the bone in the meat, right? I say meat, okay, no, I would not eat a frog. 
Muscle. Muscle. There we go. I keep saying meat. <laughs> no. The bone and the muscle. There we go. Pretty cool. And then we have the actual frog itself. Oh, that came out pretty easy. Hello. <laughs> it's actually a really decent size frog model. It's about the size of my hand. My hands are not small, not big either. So we have, actually, if the kids open. I'm actually a little disappointed that the mouth can't open. Only because, you know, they talk about the tongue and you can't really see the tongue that well. You have to look through here, but you can hardly see that. Oh, hang on, wait. We're gonna deassemble the frog before we assemble it. Sounds kind of counterproductive, but all right. I know you can't see, ah! See, that's really nice. All right, you can't see what I just did, but all right. I've taken, the frog apart here so sorry so we're going to talk about the eyes here first so the eyes which are right here frogs have variable kinds of eyes different colors and iris and different shapes of pupils too their iris can be brown green silver red bronze and even gold the pupils can be in many kinds of shapes ellipse round triangular even star-shaped pupils too the eyes are on top of its head so that they can see what's happening above the, wa above the water while keeping most of its body still underwater. So that's pretty nice. I do like how nothing's glued together. You can take everything apart and you can look on the inside of the frog. You can see the, the kind of shell here. And we have this part. So I'm guessing this is kind of the stomach. And I love how there's all these, let's see if you can see it here, all the little lines here. And this is the tongue. Now this is all there is for the tongue. There's nothing more sadly, but it's nice. And we have information on the tongue. So muscular structure attached to the front of the mouth. Most frogs use their sticky tongue as a weapon to catch the insects. Also, they use the muscles of the tongue and the throat as an air pump to force air into the trachea and the lungs too. So one thing I forgot to mention here. So I said, you know, I think this is the stomach. I'm actually wrong. Let me tell you why. So remember the esophagus. Okay, I thought this whole piece was the esophagus. Wrong. This thin part is the esophagus. This, what do you call it, oval-esque shape is the stomach. So let's read that part. The stomach is the first major organ of chemical dig digestion after a frog swallows its food. It stores food and mixes it with enzymes to, to begin digestion. Food being broken down will pass to the small intestine to further digestion. And remember, this is the intestine. I'm not sure if this is all to scale with the model, for example. You know, I'm not sure if, you know, a frog this big would have a stomach this small. I'm not sure. If you know in the comments, please let me know. I definitely want to have some interactivity going on here about how to say certain things, your favorite facts about frogs, favorite species. Just, you know, what's your favorite things of a frog? Even if it's just down to their eye shape and pupil color, a uh, pupil shape and eye color, excuse me. Yeah, you know, let's go, let's get a conversation going about frogs. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? Now, we still have a few other things to read here. We have the webbing, which I did not talk about. It's so right here, you may, do you think they're better? No. So right here, you may notice there's two toes and there's like this little part here. Well, if you look at your own hands, technically we do not have webbing, except for like this little piece of skin right here. Okay, frogs have the same thing, except it's a lot longer. So instead of it being down here, it would be, for example, maybe up here, be a little uneven. So that's what I'm trying to show you here. It's hard to see because this leg is covering it, but I'm trying to show it to the, oh, here we go, on the I'm sorry, best of my abilities. So see, they have this webbing right here. As you can see, like I said, kind of like ours, except it's actual webbing. Ours is just something to connect our fingers. So we don't have webbing to clarify frogs do. Now, so what the webbing says, most of the frogs have little webbing between their toes. It is mainly for swimming and diving. There was one other thing, ah yes, the teeth. Now I'm a little sad to say there aren't teeth on the front jaw here. Would have been a nice touch, but it's okay. So. Teeth. Most of the frogs have very small cone teeth around their upper edge of the jaw, which are, oh, you know, I know where it is. No, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. You can barely see it. I don't think the camera will pick up on it. See, it's all jagged. Oh, it did for a second. It was all jagged on the edge here. So that's the teeth. Very nice. But anyway, most of the frogs have very small cone teeth around the upper edge of the jaw, which are called maxillary teeth. 
Some frogs also have Vermeer teeth on the roof of their mouth. Frogs don't have teeth on their lower jaw. Actually, toads do not have any teeth, which we had read with the Q and A. All right, so I think we've covered, oh no, we have one last thing to read here. The Trachera. Frogs do not use their skin to breathe, but also lungs. The Trachera is a smooth muscle tube which connects to the throat of the lung. Now, I'm actually not seeing a tube. Technically, it would be right here. I'm oh, sorry. It would be right here and come up a little bit. We don't have that part. Uh, I think it's just how it's made. And then, so we have the bottom of the frog too, which, was, which also came out. So we're gonna put everything back together and snaps in place. So I do love how you can take the top part of the frog off and look at the tongue, look at the inside of the jaw, just look at all that. And actually, I think I've goofed up because if you go back and look at the instructions, I'm pretty sure we are not supposed to have this assembled just yet. We're going to go ahead and assemble it. I'm gonna start our timer. Now, I don't know if I started the timer wrong because I technically took the frog apart already. I'm not sure that would be part of the challenge, but this is how I'm doing it, so hopefully it's okay. We're off. So now the cool thing is I'm half tempted to just leave it like this. Personally, I think it's a lot cooler to leave the top off and do everything like this. But the nice thing is, 
So let's finish this first before I continue on with my thought. Now the question is, did I assemble it correctly where everything fits? Ooh, that was sketchy. All right, and we are done. Let it let us stop the timer. All right, so I finished at 13 minutes and 56 seconds. Interesting, all right. I think I did have a bit of help because the legs were still assembled. Let me go back to it, there we go. Yeah, the legs were still assembled, both legs were still assembled, both hands were still assembled. It probably would've taken a little bit longer had those things not been assembled. You know, when it said, you know, here's how to assemble them, it didn't say deassemble them first. Cause the interesting thing is, it has instructions on how to assemble the legs, but when I got it in my box, it was already assembled. So I'm not sure as a homeschool teacher or a regular teacher or as a parent, you're supposed to deassemble absolutely everything and then give it to your child and say, assemble everything using the instructions or you assemble it as is. I'm unsure which way you're supposed to do it. Um, that's actually really fun though, trying to figure out how the hands work because I'm telling you, that looks wrong to me. But at the same time, the frog isn't just, you know, in some standard pose, it's in a, we'll say a fantasized pose. I'm not saying a frogs wouldn't do this, but you know, the frog is tilting a little bit, its head, its arms are positioned, its legs aren't symmetrical. It's not a symmetrical model, which is nice. It's actually stylized. So this is actually a really good size. Okay, this is my hand. I'm holding it in my hand right here. I should use my other hand. And that's how big it is. I'm, I, I hope frogs can get this big, because how cool would that be? But this is a really good size model for demonstrating the anatomy of animals. I'm not sure if other 4D vision kits by 4D Master will be this size or they'll be smaller or bigger, I'm unsure. But I will definitely be getting more in the future because not only was this really fun to assemble, I wanna draw this. And I mean, draw everything, everything that was in here, the lungs, the heart. I just wanted to draw it and go research and look on Google and see real life versions of this stuff. The other nice thing is, so for those who know, I do love art and drawing and 3D modeling. So one thing I don't want to do is look up the anatomy of a frog and see blood and gore and just, you know, something disgusting. I'm not sure if I'm ready to see that stuff yet. I'm not desensitized to gore, you know. Any of you who've seen the autopsy and inside, yes, I can't look at that stuff at all. So, you know, I don't know if I would see that kind of level of stuff or something similar for frogs. So this is a really nice way to somewhat get desensitized to seeing the insides of a creature, an animal, a frog for this case, you know, the skeleton. It's, it's stylized, it's not cartoony like you would see in, in an animation on Disney or some other places but it's not so realistic you think you had an actual skeleton of a frog or an actual heart, you know? It's not that realistic, but it's not that cartoony either. It's a nice blend of stylized real realism or realistic style, I would say. So it's really enough to where you can tell what it would actually look like, but not so much to where you would get creeped out, but enough to still get somewhat desensitized to it. Hopefully that long ramble made sense, but I do think this is a really good kit and model to get for your kids or grandkids, nieces and nephews, even a classroom to start getting them desensitized and start looking at the insides of different animals and seeing how they work and seeing how they're different from us as humans. You know, I, I really don't know what grade starts when you start di dissecting frogs for biology. I'm not sure. <laughs> But this could be a nice way to start off kids early and just to say, you know, hey, this is how frogs look on the inside. You know, growing up, growing up uh, you know, you could say, you know, oh, what do you think of frogs? I would go, they're nice, I guess. Frogs are frogs, you know. Someone I took them for granted, you know, oh, okay, it's just another creature or whatever. But now I'm like, well, hold it. Frogs are really cool. They're interesting. That's because I've done small bit of research and looking at pictures. So giving this to a child can really spark your interest, not just in reptiles and, and amphibians and frogs and creatures and animals as a whole, 
could, but could really start them thinking about things differently, you know, not take certain animals for granted, say, you know, this isn't just a frog, this is a creature that was built to do a specific thing, it has different features to aid it in it very specific activities in its lifetime. You know, the fact it doesn't have a rib cage. You know, I honestly thought all animals with a skeleton had a rib cage. That's not the case at all, though. You know, and I didn't know the difference between a toad and a frog. I thought they were the same, just, you know, one or two differences, but no. They're built differently, but you would have never known that unless you researched it or, you know, for example, got this kit. I messed up the instructions. It's okay, though. So I think this is a really good kit to spark kids' interest in learning about the world around them and the animals around them. You know, how they work, how they're different, the size of different things. Now again, I have no idea if, idea if this is just size. I'll look it up and put information on screen if it is. If it's not, then let me know in the comments below. You know, I've said that a lot in this video, but I really want to get a conversation going. My channel is, my channel's aim is to be very interactive when it comes to science. So please be involved. Let me know your favorite frog species, their uh, different eye patterns, favorite fact about them, just anything about frogs. What do you love about frogs? I want to see in the comments. I'm interested. And this is the first mod I've ever gotten that of a uh, 4D Masters. This is not sponsored by the way. This was just a thing I got for Christmas. It's a good size. It was fun to put together. The instructions were pretty easy. The only thing that was confusing was assembling the hind legs because they were already assembled. That was the confusing part. Uh, a little bit of the intestines, uh, more so the innards or the uh, guts, you could say, were a little tricky to get to stick together, but that was a nice challenge. But other than that, I think this is really nice, honestly. I would recommend getting this kit if you're kid or child or niece or nephew, grandchildren, your friend's kid or whoever, honestly. Even if you're an adult and you like frogs, I still recommend it because, let's be honest here, how cool is this to have a 4D model of the anatomy of a frog or any animal you, you choose to get? How awesome is that? I need to put it on the shelf somewhere. Oh, before I forget, we do have a little stand here. And I do like that it feels it's very easy to assemble and it's very easy to disassemble. So for example, I probably could take the shell or the exterior of the frog off if I want to look at the inside more closely. And that's really nice, I feel. You know, it's not just say, you know, oh, you've assemb assembled it now, you can never take it apart. You must always have it assembled. You know, I do like the fact that it's easy to take things apart and put them together. So if I really want to study the heart closely, but I can only see the lungs through this little peaky hole right here, I can go, okay, well, I'll take this off, I'll take the skeleton off, I'll take the esophagus and stomach off, and I'll grab the heart. And I can look at it closely and turn it around and observe it, observe it, sorry. You know, I feel this is a very interactive model that's easy to take apart and, and put back together to study frogs, honestly. I do love the fact it came with, you know, a Q&A Q &A on the back and then, you know, information about the different parts and the all the skeleton of, of a frog, all the different bones are named. There's a life cycle. You know, even the model here has its own diagram that shows all the different parts you have. And it's got the different info about all the different parts of a frog. So I personally think this is a really good educational model. There's a lot of information in the book to really spark someone's interest. The model itself is just cool. I can definitely see kids taking it apart and putting it back together multiple times and then even just drawing it and studying it. Uh, and if you don't draw it, maybe make a cardboard cutout of it or 3D model it or put it in VR or just do many different things with this model. It's not just a whole you know, assemble the frog and that's it, you're done, put it on a shelf and forget about it. No, you can look at the information in this booklet and really study it and then look at Google. If you're not on Google, go find a book in a library about frogs or take apart the model and study a bit more, you know, how the bones move the way they do, how everything is laid out to benefit the frog. You know, I definitely think this is a 
good model. I definitely had a lot of fun assembling it. I'm going to definitely probably draw it or make 3D models of it because, let's be honest, frogs are awesome. <laughs> so, and this just kind of fuels my interest in frogs even more. Because I learned a lot from this model. I didn't know a whole lot about frogs. I just thought, yeah, they eat insects. They have a strong tongue. I didn't know they breathe through their skin. I didn't know they didn't have a rib cage. You know, it's just pretty interesting. So I do highly recommend this model. I'm not gonna say I recommend other models from 40 Masters yet because I have seen, there was two frog models. There was this one and there's another that was a sprawled out frog that was had a clear casing. So you could get, you would see all the bones. For example, you're only seeing the exposed bones. I can't see uh, the toes or anything here. There was a model where it's a frog, almost you could say mid jump or just brought out with a clear casing. You could see every single thing. Problem was there was a few bad reviews because the parts don't stick together well. So that's why I'm saying I have recommend this model, but I'm not gonna go ahead and say I recommend all of 4D Masters kits because I've not tried them. So definitely look at the reviews and see if they're okay to put together. It's not hard to, to assemble. Look at that. I do have a recommend at least checking out their models and doing research for yourself and seeing if the kits are something you would be interested in, seeing if they're easy to assemble or if for the other frog model, if they are, and if the parts just won't stick together. And then of course you make the choice, you know, well, I'm gonna be disassembling anyway, so I might as well get it. Either the reviews say it's hard to assemble it, I'm gonna have it disassembled anyway, or I'm gonna be always reassembling, disassembling, or do you just buy two kits of them? One kit you glue everything together, other kit you leave open so you can kind of look at the innards better. I don't know, but at least go check out the different models they have. They have a bunch of models you can look at of different animals, insects, a, a marine life, some vehicles, human anatomy. There's a lot you could be learning from these kits. I do wish I'd found this out sooner, because if I had a bunch of these models as a kid, I'm sure I would be a lot more interested in animals back then than I am now. I am starting to be interested in it now, but a lot of people say it's, it's crucial to get kids interested in certain things when you are very young. Now, of course, I was interested in a lot, but this is just something else that was different. I always thought it was kind of gross, the gory stuff. And some people it is, some people just don't like it, and that's fine. But I think it's awesome to know how animals work. Just like people are saying today, it's important that kids know, you know, how a computer works and how a phone works, you know, know what you're using in a sense. I think it's just as important to know how animals work because it's just cool. It's interesting. You know, you never know who you're raising. You never know who you're inspiring. So by having the different anatomies or <laughs> just the different anatomy of different animals, and insects, it's really cool. You never know what that could mean to a child or your grandchildren or whoever really. I'm sure some even some adults, some frog lovers would just love this. And even some animal artists would probably love this. So again, I do recommend this. I know that this is on the day of Christmas, but hey, we got some birthdays coming up and there's always New Year's. So I recommend this as a gift to get for Whoever may love frogs or love anatomy of creatures or animals, if they're an artist or just a kid who's interested, whoever really, I do recommend it. I had a lot of fun. So in the future, not sure how soon, I probably will be drawing frogs and remodeling them. Even the innards, I'll probably model a frog heart or even just draw it. We'll see. But either way, I hope you all enjoyed it. I will name the frog. It'll probably be in the comments of what I've named it. Uh, this is a female frog because it has ovaries, so there's that. <laughs> so female names. And let me know in the comments uh, any suggestions for names. But also, it's really nice high detail as well. I don't think I mentioned that, but it's really nice high detail as well. It, it, just, it just, it's a nice bottle. Definitely worth it. I will get more in the future. <laughs> and they have tons, everyone. They have tons. The website will be in the description below. So I will see you all next time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about frogs. And remember, I give you not necessarily homework, but let me know in the comments below. All the questions I asked earlier, just let me know in the comments below. Let's get a discussion going on frogs.
You know, what's your favorite fact? What's your favorite eye type? What's your favorite type or species of frog? Even toads, since we briefly went over toads. You know, or just your favorite fun fact. Even if it's a weird fact, it's fine. I love weird facts. <laughs> anything weird is like, yes. Weird animals, weird animal facts, anything, really. That's sciencey. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.